Here's how you can create amazing AI videos using the new Kling 2.1 start to end frame tool combined with Google's Gemini's 2.5 flash also known as Nano Banana. In this video I will give you pro tips on how to use the power of both tools together unlocking more control than I have ever seen before. So let's start by preparing the images we need for Kling AI. The first way is through Google's official website. It's super simple. Just drag in your image and add a text prompt and hit generate. Right now you can still use this for free. But I will be using it in OpenArt, a paid platform where you can use all the AI image and video models including Nano Banana and Kling AI under one subscription. So I will go to image and then click on create image. And now I can go to the switch button here and now I can switch to the Nano Banana model. So and now I will drag my image in here and I will add my prompt in here. And the cool thing is here on OpenArt there is no watermark on my images which is crucial for me. So what is also cool you can select the number of images you want to produce. I leave it on two and now I hit generate. Now the created images are here so when I click on it then I see that the first image is not exactly what I was hoping for but the second image definitely is. And now if we compare the new image with the original we can clearly see it keeps the same vibe with the overgrown atmosphere in the scene. So to make sure that you can follow along here is the prompt I used for those images and we will use this image later as well for an amazing fly through shot and the image from the woman we are going to blend in together with the lake shot. And with the lake image already in the first box we are going to place the second image in the second box and then we are going to use the prompt place the woman standing in front of the lake she's looking into the camera and that gave me this result and you can see that the lake looks exactly the same and also the woman looks exactly the same as in the original image and I am very satisfied with this. So now that we have our start frame ready and our end frame I can show you how it works in Kling AI. So on open art I'm going to select the video tab and then you have to make sure that you are in the image tab and now here I can select the Kling 2.1 and now I'll drag my first image in here and then I'll select the end frame and now I can drag my second image in here and I will add my prompt in here and then I can click on create. It's important to understand that Kling already knows the visuals from the first image so you need to guide it toward the second image. For example saying like zoom in on the woman standing in front of the lake. Now I'm going to set the duration to 10 seconds and I'm going to hit create and that gave me this shot and I'm absolutely blown away. But if you for example prompted to zoom into the woman's face you need to remember this won't work because the video will always end with the exact input end screen image. So I went back to Nana Banana and I used this image to create a medium shot from our character. And this is going to be the end frame of our second video. And for the first frame, the start frame, I used a frame grabbed from the middle of the shot. And this is something you can also do inside of OpenArt. By clicking here you can either grab any frame or grab the last frame. I'm not 100% satisfied with this but it does show that when your character is in both images the prompting can be very simple because the AI understands the connection. I'll show more about this later. I also stitched the first video together with the second video but I'm not very happy with the results because there's some strange morphing going on. So then I was curious if Kling could handle a start and end frame where the woman isn't visible in the first frame. After some testing and finding the right prompt it worked but first let me show you what happens if you don't prompt it correctly. So this is what happens if you only prompt for zoom into the woman's face and that's not exactly what I was hoping for. So I changed the prompt into the camera zooms into the forest on the right side where the woman is standing in front of a lake and now I got a shot where I was hoping for. And then for the shot that I used for the intro from this video I used these two images and in my opinion this shot is really absolutely amazing. But your prompting does need to be correct because otherwise you get this effect. And yeah it's nice but I don't think lakes are in buildings. So that's why I changed the prompt to the camera zooms into the forest where the woman is standing in front of a lake. And this is just amazing. I love it so much. And for the following showcase I want to thank two amazing creators I found on Instagram. And one of them is called Hayden AI. And the other one is called Cave Labs and Hayden AI also has a, a YouTube channel. They used these two images with the crane down prompt for this amazing shot. For this start and end frame they used the puss in prompt and it just looks insane. For these frames they used the side tracking prompt and I'm not 100% sure if that's the full prompt but based on my earlier examples when the AI has both characters in the same image you don't need much prompting. 
For the next two frames, they use the frontal tracking prompt, and the result is incredibly, especially the ending, which is mind blowing. I also really like this shot, where they used a first person view push in prompt. They made a full film promo with this, and I suggest watching it on Hayden's channel. Here's a short part to get you excited. I was left with nothing but anger, and the kind of silence that feels endless. I wanted to fight back, to scream at the world, but anger is a wild thing. You can't really control it. So I turned it into something else. I also have a special zoom out technique, and for that I used this image. All these images come from my ultimate prompt toolkit, which has over 1000 plus visual keywords, and with the discount code DM45, is currently available for $15. So then back in Nano Banana, I used this image as the original image, and then I asked for a zoom out, and I got this shot. Then I used that image and asked for a zoom out again, and did the same again to get this zoom out. And then I asked for an aerial drone shot, getting me this amazing looking shot. And in Killing AI, I used this as the start frame and this is the end frame. And then we got this amazing looking video. So this shows that combining the strength of Nano Banana and the Kling AI tool is just insane. For the next shot, I wanted the cat to turn into a tiny tiger, which then grows into a big tiger, running into the wild. So I decided to make two videos and then stitch them together. In Nano Banana, I used this as the original image and I used the prompt zoom into the head of the cat to get this shot. Then I used the prompt turn this cute cat into a fierce small tiger, make sure the size of the tiger is exactly the same as the size of the original cat. And you can see that the tiger is very small because the cow is very big and I really love that. Then in Kling AI, I used this as the start frame and this is the end frame for the first video. And for the second video, I used this as the start frame and this as the end frame. And for the prompt, I used the cute cat morphs into a tiny tiger and then we got this result. And now you can see that the end frame is different than the start frame here. And this is because I cut out the middle bit because this video, the cat runs a bit slow. It's more like walking and I wanted to have speed in my shot. So that's why I changed the start frame for this video, ending up in this result. You can see this video is much slower than the one I showed in the intro. And that's because I changed the speed using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. But before I did that, I stitched the two videos together and I add a smooth cut transition in between. Then I exported the stitch video and used it again to add my speed ramp. As you can see, I used some curves to make it very smooth. I won't go into detail about this since it's outside the scope of this video. But if you search for how to speed ramp in DaVinci Resolve, you'll find plenty of tutorials. I am very happy with the speed ramp result, also especially at the end where it zooms out to the slow motion shot again. I love it. I've started a brand new channel that's only about online AI tools, so if you want to learn more about Nano Banana, make sure to watch this video.